Hi, welcome to Creative Nonfiction Lesson 2 Podcast, where we dig into the fascinating world of creative nonfiction. Join us as we unravel the details of the genre, exploring its fundamental principles, essential elements, and innovative devices that breathe life into real stories. From personal anecdotes to historical accounts, uncover the artistry behind crafting narratives and resonate deeply with our human experience. Welcome to the heart of storytelling. Now, let us study the elements of creative nonfiction. The first element of creative nonfiction is fact. The writing must be based on fact rather than fiction. It cannot be made up because factual writing necessitates adherence to truth and reality rooted in the verifiable events and experiences. The second element of creative nonfiction is extensive research. The piece of writing is based on primary research, such as an interview or personal experience, and often secondary research, such as gathering information from books, magazines, newspapers, and other references. The third element is reportage or reporting. The writer must be able to document events or personal experiences. The fourth element is personal experience and personal opinion. Often, the writer includes personal experiences, feelings, thoughts, and opinions. For instance, when writing a personal essay or a memoir. The fifth element is explanation or exposition. The writer is required to explain the personal experience or topic to the reader. And the last element of creative nonfiction is essay format. Creative nonfiction is often written in essay format. Example, personal essay, literary journalistic essay, or even brief essay. Here are the literary elements used in creative nonfiction. The first literary element used in creative nonfiction is character. Every story has characters, but in nonfiction, these characters are real people. The author describes physical descriptions, personality traits, and detailed histories to give the characters depth. The second literary element of creative nonfiction is detail. Details provide pieces of information. The details you choose, arrange, and examine help communicate your own opinions and character as well as those as your subject. The third literary element is dialogue. Dialogue is literary and theatrical form consisting of a written or spoken conversational exchange between two or more people. The fourth one is diction. Diction is the writer's choice of words. The writer chooses each word carefully so that both its meaning and sound contribute to the tone and feeling of the literary work. The fifth one is figurative language. This is a type of language that varies from the norms of literal language in which words mean exactly what they say for the sake of comparison, emphasis, clarity, or freshness. The sixth literary element of creative nonfiction is flashback. Flashback is used as a literary device in which an earlier or past event is inserted into the present or the normal chronological order of the narrative. Number seven is flash forward or prolipsis. Flash forward or prolipsis is a literary device in which the plot goes ahead of time Example, a scene that interrupts and takes the narrative forward in time from the current time in a story. Number eight is foreshadowing. It is a literary device in which an author hints certain plot developments that perhaps will come later in the story. It is the presentation of material in a work in such a way that later events are prepared for. Number nine is imagery. Imagery refers to the pictures, which we perceive with our mind's eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin, and through which we experience the duplicate world. Number 10 is motive. Motive is any element 
subject, idea, or concept that is constantly presented through the entire body of literature. Using a motive refers to the repetition of a specific theme dominating the literary work. Number 11 is narrative. Nonfiction writing usually follows a timeline for a narrative that is either linear or non-linear, depending on how the author tells the story. Number 12 is order. Order is the arrangement of events in a work of literature. It is the structure of something in the way that something is put together. In nonfiction, it's the way things are organized. Number 13 is plot and plot structure. Plot refers to the series or sequence of events that give a story its meaning and effect. A good story includes an inciting incident, a goal, challenges and obstacles, a turning point, and a resolution of the story. Number 14 is point of view. Point of view refers to the perspective from which a story is told. When a character in the story is telling the story, it is the first person point of view. When the story is told by a narrator outside of the story, it is called third person point of view. If the narrator of the story can have an omniscient view, then he knows what is going on in the minds of all the characters of all times. Omniscient means all knowing. Number 15 is setting, scene, and atmosphere. Setting is the story's time and place. The writer creates scenes that are action-oriented and contain vivid descriptions. The next one is style. Style refers to the language conventions used to construct the story. A writer can manipulate diction, sentence structure, phrasing, dialogue, and other aspects of language to create style. Number 17 is symbol. Symbol is a literary device that contains several layers of meaning, often concealed at first sight. It is using an object or action that means something more than its literal meaning. The next one is theme. Theme is the meaning or concept we are left with after reading a piece of writing. It develops from the interplay of human character and plot. A theme is not the moral of the story. And finally, tone. Tone is the writer's attitude towards his or her subject matter. For example, the tone of a biography can be admiring or critical, fawning or hostile. When you're determining the tone, hear the writing in your head. Put yourself in the author's shoes and imagine what the author feels. Creative nonfiction writers also combine some of the elements of nonfiction when writing biographies, journals and diaries, essays, travelogues, speeches, and others. According to Solmerano et al. 2017, this is the essence of creative nonfiction. Writers tell factual stories and share true experiences and accounts using literary elements to make the ideas clearer and more interesting to read. For Gutkind 2006, another important aspect of creative nonfiction is its being flexible and free. Nonfiction writers can be poetic at the same time, journalistic. Now, let us remember the word creative refers to the use of literary art, the techniques fiction writers, playwrights, and poets use to present nonfiction factually precise prose about real people and events. Fiction refers to literature created from the imagination. Nonfiction refers to literature based on facts. Nonfiction is a broad genre of writing that encompasses all books that are not rooted in a fictional narrative. Nonfiction writing can be based in history and biography. It can be instructional, it can offer commentary and humor, and it can ponder philosophical questions. Research is the key. It's the key to writing accurate nonfiction and is also the key to writing exciting nonfiction. Now, let us assess your learning. 
following is a 250 word personal essay for your evaluation grab your copy read it silently as i read it aloud after reading write your comments about the essay in terms of clarity of idea appropriate use of the element and effective combination of ideas are you ready let's start this selection is from how to write a great 250 word essay by jennifer finetti parents are supposed to push you past your goals or at least that's what i always believed i was raised in the generation of you know you can do anything if you put your mind into it my parents did not follow that philosophy and they saw little value in a formal education it was their lack of passion that led me to my educational goals. From as back as I can remember, I knew I didn't want to follow in the footsteps of my parents, at least not when it came to work. My father had worked on the family farm all his life, and my mother had been a housewife since graduation. They were both content with the simplicity of their lives and wanted to stay the same. I remember my father telling me that college was expensive and a waste of four years. I knew, however, that I wanted a career in the city, and that would be more challenging than simple farm life could provide. The only way to make the possible would be through formal education and a college degree. While my parents may not understand the value of formal education, I know it is essential for my future. This has helped me immensely by making me realize that without strong parental support, I'm the only one who's responsible for my own goals. In a way, this has been the strongest source of motivation. And for that, I am forever grateful. This is from How to Write a Great 250-Word Essay by Jennifer Finetti. Let us read the essay one more time. Grab your copy. Read it silently as I read it aloud. After reading, write your comments about the essay in terms of clarity of idea, appropriate use of the element, and effective combination of ideas. Are you ready? Let's start. This selection is from How to Write a Great 250-Word Essay by Jennifer Finetti. Parents are supposed to push you past your goals, or at least, that's what I always believed. I was raised in the generation of, you know, you can do anything if you put your mind into it. My parents did not follow that philosophy, and they saw little value in a formal education. It was their lack of passion that led me to my educational goals. From as back as I can remember, I knew I didn't want to follow in the footsteps of my parents, at least not when it came to work. My father had worked on the family farm all his life, and my mother had been a housewife since graduation. They were both content with the simplicity of their lives and wanted to stay the same. I remember my father telling me that college was expensive and a waste of four years. I knew, however, that I wanted a career in the city, and that would be more challenging than simple farm life could provide. The only way to make the possible would be through formal education and a college degree. While my parents may not understand the value of formal education, I know it is essential for my future. This has helped me immensely by making me realize that without strong parental support, I'm the only one who's responsible for my own goals. In a way, this has been the strongest source of motivation. And for that, I am forever grateful. This is from How to Write a Great 250-Word Essay by Jennifer Finetti. Let us have another writing challenge. Choose your essay. From what you have learned in the past lessons, discussions, and activities, you may now start writing your own essay. Choose from among the choices or topics or themes given. Your essay must be 8 to 10 sentences. Here are the topics you can choose from. 
First one, a day in the life of your cat or dog through his or her eyes. Number two, a lie you wish you could take back. Number three, compose a short letter to a person who might be surprised to get a letter from you. It might be a friend you had in elementary you haven't spoken to in years. It might be a relative you had a miscommunication with. Whatever the case may be, write a short letter to that person. Number four, choose a photograph from your collection randomly. Look at it for a few times. Write about how it made you feel and the thoughts that came up. As you set out to weave your personal essay, I urge you to delve deep and uncover the passion for writing that resides within you. Let the journey awaken a fire in your soul, propelling you to pen more tales driven by the wisdom and revelations you unearth along your path. Remember, at the heart of every written word lies the essence of real lives and genuine experiences. As long as authenticity thrives, so too does the wellspring of reasons to pour your thoughts onto paper and lighten up the world with your unique voice. Embrace the power of your story, for it has potential to ignite minds, touch hearts, and inspire change beyond measure.